Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to look at turning an old laptop into a Windows XP retro gaming machine. Now, this is uh, one of these laptops with an AMD APU processor, which means it's got a ATI Radeon video card on board, which is awesome for playing games. A lot of these other laptops have Intel uh, onboard graphics and they can be less compatible when it comes to games and also perform uh, not quite as good. The 1366 by 768 um, pixel resolution of the screen is also very retro friendly. We can play 1024 by 768 games in the correct aspect ratio. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can install Windows XP on this laptop. It comes with Windows 7 out of the box. There are no drivers for Windows XP, so there are a few workarounds we need to use. We're also using uh, a software, it's called Driver Max. I approached them, it's one of these tools that can identify the hardware. It connects to the internet, downloads all the drivers. So we will check out how this software turns out. And there are some gameplays. I basically, um, I'm gonna turn on the Fraps counter and try out a few games and we see what this machine can do. So that's it, enjoy this video. I'm using this laptop in everyday life and I've upgraded it. We've got eight gigs of RAM, a solid state drive, and it's running the latest version of Windows 10. So I just swapped the hard drive because I didn't wanna reinstall everything and I'm still using an SSD. In order to install Windows, we're gonna use a optical USB optical drive. The disc is already inserted. You turn it on, you press escape, and you've got a couple of boot menus. I'm using an external uh, USB wireless keyboard to control everything. So we just press F9 and you get a boot menu where you can choose between booting from the hard drive or from the optical drive. So we're just gonna boot from the optical drive. So while this is loading, there's one thing that we need to talk about and that has to do with the storage drivers. The laptop uses AHCI to talk to the hard drive and there's no uh, mode in the BIOS to switch it over to the IDE mode. That means a standard Windows XP disk, it will uh, not be able to see the hard drive. So you need to load the SATA or AHCI drivers. And there are a couple of ways you can use a, a USB floppy drive and press F6 at the beginning and load it that way. Or you can slipstream uh, the drivers and I found a a driver pack and I just slipstream my own disk and that, that's, why it's, uh, that's why it works in this case. Now if you see this screen that means everything went well so I'm just gonna press delete to get rid of that partition and then press enter. Uh, quick format for the file system and off it goes. So that's gonna install Windows XP, it's gonna take a while and we'll be back uh, waiting on the desktop and then we're gonna cover installing the drivers using the driver max software. Okay, Windows XP is installed. This is service pack three, by the way. I believe I didn't mention that earlier. Looking at device manager, we can see uh, a couple of devices that don't have drivers like the video card, the audio drivers, the network controllers, and so on. It's got a Wi-Fi uh, adapter and also an ethernet. So yeah, now it's all about the drivers. So we are done with the optical drive. I don't need the Windows disk anymore and I'm gonna plug in a USB hard drive. This one has the initial ethernet driver so we can go onto the internet. It's also got driver max on here and a bunch of uh, retro games. And in order to get access to the internet, I'm just gonna plug in a network cable to my home network. Okay, so this is what the interface looks like. We can access various options here, however, the resolution is very low. I haven't got a video driver on the machine yet, so I can't really see an option here to enter uh, a license key. So I'm just gonna get out and increase the resolution uh, and hopefully we can see a little bit more. Okay, so that looks a lot nicer. Let's run it again and see if the user interface uh, looks better with the higher resolution. Okay, here we go. So we've got home, driver updates, backup, restore and settings and register, let's have a look next, email password, okay, enter registration code. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy paste the registration code from my text file. Okay, that's all done, I'm registered with the pro version. So let's have a look how this works. We're clicking on driver updates and yep, it's gonna analyze the computer and we'll just see what happens. Okay, so what have we got here? Uh, SATA driver, audio driver, network controller, uh, um, 
video controller. So yeah, lots of stuff. So uh, 21 drivers all up. So download and install. Uh, I think we just have to click once and it'll do the whole thing. Okay, here we go. It's already started to download the drivers. Basically the way it works, uh, it lists all the devices that it deems um, need driver updates. We've got a video controller, uh, yeah, Realtek network controller, we've got audio devices and so on. And you can also deselect some drivers that you don't want, but I just clicked on the download and install button and it seems to do everything in one hit. So yeah, I can walk away and do something else and we will come back when all the drivers have been downloaded. Okay, so DriverMax has just finished downloading everything and we're getting some license agreements, interesting. And uh, also, yep, we can create a restore point. So let's continue. Okay, so the mouse has stopped working, but the trackpad still works. Let's see what the message is. So 15 drivers successfully updated, a reboot is required. Okay, let's reboot and we'll see how it turned out. All right, so we ran into an issue. It blue screens when booting and I've got a hunch that that has to do with the uh, SATA storage controller. So I'm just going to try the last known configuration to see if that works. Okay, so that restored all the old drivers. So we just got to run driver max again and I'm going to uh, not install those SATA storage drivers. Now driver max now tells me that all the devices are up to date, but the device manager disagrees. So let's try this rollback function on the restore, uh, restore from a previous restore point, And let's see if we can get this thing back up and running. Okay, we're back in driver max, the restore point that worked fine. So I'm just gonna untick the AHCI storage driver and I'm just gonna install all the other drivers and hopefully this time everything works better. So unfortunately, Driver Max still thinks that all the drivers, uh, it's got a tick box here so that they're good to go. However, we've got another story in Device Manager. So yeah, at this point, guys, um, yeah, I don't think this is gonna happen. I tried quite a few things and um, yeah, I'm quite disappointed to be honest. I've tried some driver update programs in the past, uh, other, uh, other brands, and yeah, they worked a lot better than this, so I'm really quite surprised, so yeah. So guys, it looks like nothing beats doing it manually. We've got the video card installed, all the network devices are working. We also got the sound devices working now, and to get the sound going, I just used the Windows 7 driver from the uh, HP website, and that worked fine. And one of the benefits of using uh, an APU laptop is that you get a proper AMD video chip and the driver so you get good compatibility with games. Um, all I've tweaked in the drivers was uh, enable the VSync control uh, because I'm gonna run fraps and some games and we're gonna have a look what this laptop can do. And here we have some 3D Mark results. In 3D Mark 2001, we're getting 9,084 points. And in 3D Mark 03, we're getting 7,000 points. So the first game we have is Insane. It runs at 1024 by 768. And we've got the uh, Fraps counter running so you get a good idea of the performance. So this game seems to be running quite well. We're getting, yeah, around 60 to, to 80 FPS. And yeah, so that's definitely a game that's really playable on this machine. So the next game we have is Return to Castle Wolfenstein and I've maxed out all the graphic settings. We've got dynamic lighting and everything. Um, also one benefit of this panel, it's a 1366 by 768 panel and one benefit is that you can run 1024 by 768 games at the native 4 by 3 aspect ratio without any distortion. Now this game struggles a little bit. Uh, we're getting dips below 30 FPS, which is a bit of a shame, but you can definitely uh, play, uh, play around with the graphic settings and make it run a little bit nicer.
So this game is Alien vs. Predator, it's the 2000 release. Quite a dark game I have, maxed out the gamma. Um, so yeah, it'll be probably very dark on the video, but we're getting good performance here, that's for sure. Um, around 100 FPS most of, most of the time. It's maxed, maxed out with the video details and it runs at 1024 by 768. What is also really nice with the AMD video card is that you can just change resolutions like that and it retains the correct aspect ratio. So yeah, they've done a really good job. So here we have Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. Very Tomb Raider-like game. I've never actually played it. Runs at 1024 by 768. And it's possible that the frame rate is actually capped at 30, 31 FPS, which seems to be the case here, but yeah. It seems very playable and runs really well on this machine. I can use this water to fill up my canteen. So the next game we have is Evolver. Runs also at 1024 by 768. All the details maxed out and it uses uh, bump mapping, which, yeah, quite nice graphics for the time. The FPS mostly around uh, 70 or 80 FPS, but there are some dips, like little stutters. I don't know if it loads the level or if there's something going on with the video card, but I would still say this game is extremely playable. The next game we're looking at is Delta Force Air Warrior. It runs also at 1024 by 768. All the details have been maxed out. I've never played this game before, so I'm not quite sure what to do. In terms of performance, um, it, this game seems to struggle a little bit. We're definitely dipping below 60 FPS, depending on what's going on on the screen. But yeah, still looks to be a fairly solid game that you can play on this machine. And like, as always, you can play around with the graphics details settings or loader resolutions. So there are lots of tweaks that you can apply to make these old games run a little bit better. So there you have it guys, I think this project was a success. So you can definitely take one of these older APU processor laptops and turn it into a Windows XP retro gaming machine. Now the E450 is one of the earlier APUs, there are newer models, so whatever I did um, with this machine should easily be applicable to more faster versions of the, uh, using a faster APUs. Now, the uh, Driver Max, unfortunately, didn't work uh, out quite well, but thanks for the uh, free license, unfortunately, in this project, um, it seems this product is not that uh, suitable. Now, what else do we have to talk about? The games ran all fine. I like that we can run uh, the 1024 by 768 resolution in the correct aspect ratio. The display scaling of the video driver is fantastic and also games compatibility is great. You can play around with things in the driver, V-Sync, uh, anti-aliasing and isotropic filtering. So there are lots of things you can tweak. So that's really awesome uh, with the uh, radio, Radeon uh, video card in this machine. Now, a lot of you will probably question why the need to downgrade to XP. Um, you can just stay on Windows 7 or, you know, use the latest version of Windows 10 and a lot of these old games will still run fine. However, XP is just that little bit more compatible. You'll have less issues with older games, especially um, original versions that are unpatched and, and not modified like some of the games that you can get from GOG and also Windows XP it has that retro feeling that retro uh, experience and it just takes you uh, back a little bit uh, in time.
So yeah, hopefully you found this interesting. It just shows you that don't throw away your old laptops. If you do have one with an AMD APU processor, this can be some really nifty old school machines. And you can even hook it up to an external monitor. It's got a HDMI interface. So there are lots of options that you can do. As always, guys, let me know in the comments what do you think uh, about this project. Have you used uh, all the laptops for retro gaming in the past? And as always, if you haven't subscribed, why don't you? And if you have, well, thank you so much for supporting. Hit the thumbs up or the thumbs down, depending on how you feel. And share the video with your friends or the usual YouTube stuff. And that's it for this video, guys. Um, let me know what other projects you'd like to see. Um, I can... Um, you know, do some quirky things as well if I, um, if I find it interesting. And this project I definitely wanted to check out ages ago. And yep, I'm quite happy I did. It turned out uh, to work quite well. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I shall see you soon with, uh, with another video.